Sample problem 20.3 gets us to start thinking about what it truly means to be a spontaneous reaction from an entropic standpoint. And so an equation that we're going to see here, there's two equations that will kind of apply in this problem. The first is that the entropy of the universe is really a sum of the entropy of the system plus the entropy of the surroundings. And for a spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe must be increasing. That's kind of the definition of the second law of thermodynamics is that the entropy of the universe is increasing. And so we're going to have an entropy that's from our chemical reaction, which we call delta S of system, and then we're going to have delta S of the surroundings. So the idea is, is that there's two things at play here. There's the entropy change in our system, and then there's the entropy change in the environment that's surrounding our system. And this equation here, as we'll see, has uh, delta S of surroundings equal to the enthalpy of the system divided by the temperature that it's at. So truly the entropy of the universe is related to the entropy of the system and the enthalpy of the system. So we're already kind of getting towards Gibbs free energy here. We're going to just do this with our entropy terms in this problem. Okay, so again, delta S of the universe must be greater than zero for a spontaneous process. And we have an equation that tells us that delta S of the universe is equal to delta S of the system plus delta S of the surroundings. So again, delta S of the system is for our given reaction, and it's provided here for us. Delta S of system equals minus 197 joules per Kelvin. So what we can already know here by looking at this value is that entropy is unfavorable. Right? A positive value means entropy is unfavorable. We've got to compensate for this in some way by the entropy of the surroundings such that when we add these two together, the entropy of the universe is going to increase. So and as we just saw in one of our other equations, we can figure out entropy of the surroundings by looking at the enthalpy of the system or the reaction and divide that by temperature. So again, we're already starting to see here that the entropy of the universe, the spontaneity of a process, has to do with the entropy change in the system and the entropy change in the environment, which is really reflected by enthalpy changes in our system. Okay, so that's kind of setting up what we're going to do here. So the entropy of the system is given in this process. It's 197. Uh, minus 197 joules per Kelvin. But we have to figure out delta S of the surroundings. And if these two added together end up being a positive value and the entropy of the universe is increasing, then this reaction will be spontaneous. So to do that, we actually have to figure out the enthalpy of the system and divide it by the temperature that we're at. So how can you figure out the enthalpy of the system? Well, this harkens all the way back to chapter 6 and our appendix B again. So let's go ahead and rewrite our equation here. And again, I'm going to look at Appendix B, and I'm going to grab my delta H of formation values from there, which have units of kilojoules per mole. So as you'll see as you uh, look back, and maybe you remember this from Chapter 6, any substance that's in its pure elemental state has a delta H of formation of zero. So that's why these two, nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas, have zeros here. The only term that actually is going to have a non-zero delta H of formation is ammonia here. And again, looking at ammonia gas, we're going to have minus 45.9 kilojoules per mole. So if we look at delta H of our reaction, Again, it's going to be products minus reactants, even though this is going to end up being zeros for some of these. I want to keep consistent with how we do this. 2 times minus 45.9 is the only product. And we're going to subtract the sum of our reactants. There's one mole of nitrogen gas, but the delta HF is zero. And one mole of hydrogen, oops, sorry, three moles of hydrogen gas. But again, the delta HF is zero. So mathematically, this won't matter and we end up getting a value of minus 91.8 kilojoules. And as we'll learn a little bit later, just a little bit of a preview, you cannot have a reaction occur if entropy is not working in your favor 
and enthalpy is not working in your favor. But we know that a negative delta H is an exothermic reaction. So that's going to help us compensate for the fact that the entropy for this reaction is unfavorable. All right, I'm going to take, because this is in joules per Kelvin, I'm going to take and put this into joules. So this is minus 91,800 joules. And uh, what we'll do then oh, is we're going to calculate our delta um, S of surroundings. So we're going to put this in delta S of surroundings equals minus, minus 91,800 over the temperature that we're working at here is 298 Kelvin. And so the entropy of the surroundings is positive 308 joules per Kelvin. And as we can already see here, this positive entropy is going to help overwhelm and compensate for the negative entropy that is happening within our system. So again, delta S of the universe is equal to delta S of our system plus delta S of the surroundings. We had an unfavorable entropy of our system at 197 joules per Kelvin. And now the entropy of our surroundings, because we had an exothermic reaction that was giving heat to our surroundings, ends up being 308 joules per Kelvin. So that at the end of the day, we have a positive 111 joules per Kelvin for the delta S of the universe. So the universe, uh, the entropy of the universe is increasing. So this reaction proceeds spontaneously. And as I mentioned, we'll get to a little bit more later, a discussion of um, a more direct relationship to spontaneity between uh, entropy of the system and enthalpy of the system.